Hello, Rims and Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize, and the ranks of the resistance is growing all around the world against Mystery Babylon. This is what happens when you try to do a podcast without coffee, guys. <laughs> Oh, we got to be able to laugh in the kingdom. This is episode number 342. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hey, everybody. We're in the ever-changing weather of Missouri. Last week, we had 70s. Oh, it just felt like spring. It was so wonderful. <laughs> this Friday, we're supposed to have snow again. <laughs> oh, I know. It's just it's just crazy. It's just up and down, up and down, up and down, and, and uh, I've I had to have the oil changed and uh or not the oil changed, the tire fixed in the car the other day and then uh this guy was talking, he says, My kids are so mad, he said they break out all their shorts and they say, Yeah, it's it's warming up and he said the next day they're looking for their flannel that's long right. underwear. And, and sleds. Stuff. Sleds, <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just crazy. But that's that's just life in Missouri. Well, it's it's kinda shaky all over the place, guys. We still got all this situation over with Ukraine and we're sure praying for everybody involved. I'm praying for Christians everywhere that God would provide miraculous protection. We're praying that for refugees and uh, all those that are homeless right now, that God's going to make a way. And it's a serious situation, but I, I feel hope in the midst of it. I feel hope that God is doing uh, a major thing. He's, he's doing a worldwide thing. And um, I believe there are specific things he's working on, you know, bringing the evil out. It's so weird when you listen to the news because um, Russia's saying they're coming against the Nazis. The other side's saying they're coming against the Nazis. It's almost like, will the real Nazis real, you know, please stand up. Um, and I think there's some, some truth to to all a lot of different viewpoints that I'm hearing. But my main prayer for this, because it it's... Um, pretty involved it's not it's not a simple situation is that god just take this situation and work it to not only uh, save souls but to continue to bring the evil to the surface yeah you know and unless we deal with some of this evil with this cabal the horrible things that have been done we can't make any any um real progress you know, till we, till we see that, and then it's dealt with. And then, you know, the main thing is people don't know, can't make opinions because you get fed so much misinformation. And so we're just asking God to reveal the truth, that it's so clear we can't miss it. You know, I'm not a student of history. I just hated it in school, and, and now I regret so much not paying attention to more of that because then you, you, you know, people my age, a lot of them, studied history and they can say oh i remember this and this and i don't i i hated listening to the news so i'm having to kind of backtrack and listen to to different things to get it straight but i know to pray for god's will in this situation he's he's right in the middle of everything you know i've, I've heard a lot of people say they're so discouraged it looks like god's left he's not left no, he's, he's not. in the process of coming right back on the scene everywhere that he's been pushed out of but He's he's working through his people, and we have to stand up and and uh, <clears throat> for what's right. Well, we've we, gotten reports of, of miracles in Ukraine. We shared some of them uh, last week. We're, I mean, there's also miracles happening all over the world. One of the things, and and I, although I'm not a uh, necessarily a student of world history, I do study revivals and the, and the patterns of how God moves. And whenever there is a pulling back of God which I think has been going on for the past couple of decades. It's so that we push further into him that sets the stage for the next great revival. That because the Bible always says that God rewards those who diligently seek him. That means there's times mm -hmm. that he's harder to find the others. And it's the remnant. It's, it's those that are really hungry for God that push in when he's not easy to find. Oh, that's true. Uh, that makes the next great revival, the next great move of God. And I really believe uh, that we're literally on the edge uh, of God doing something one, something very, very powerful. I think it's going to set back the elite. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to reveal the darkness, and we're going to. Uh, I, I think it had some of the things that are that we're going to be getting into today is we can't have a great revival where we're having people saved 
and bringing them into toxic, almost paganized churches mm-hmm. uh, that aren't that aren't really producing kingdom fruit. And so there has to re- be a judgment and a revival in the church before we can have revival outward to bring in new believers because you don't want to put babies in a toxic environment. Yeah. Well, I, and uh, God took me to a parable in Mark this week, and I've just been meditating on what he's trying to tell me through this. And so let, let me read it first of all. It's um, Mark chapter 12. And he began to speak unto them by parables. A certain man planted a vineyard and set an hedge about it and digged a place for the wine fat and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. And at the season he sent to the husbandmen a servant that he might receive from the husbandmen of the fruit of the vineyard. They caught him, beat him, and sent him away empty. And again he sent unto them another servant. And at him they cast stones and wounded him in the head and sent him away shamefully handled. And again he sent another, and him they killed, and many others, beating some and killing some. Having yet therefore one son, his well-beloved, he sent him also last unto them, saying, They will reverence my son. But those husbandmen said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. And they took him and killed him, and cast him out of the vineyard. What shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the husbandmen, and will give the vineyard unto others. And you know, in the commentaries... <clears throat> You know, most of them are start out by saying that this is where um, Christ showed in the parables he'd lay aside the Jewish church. Um, and I, th- I think that obviously the Gentiles were going to be used during this, this time because most of the Jewish people had rejected Jesus. Um, and, and so there's a couple of things <clears throat> that we need to, to look at at this. First of all, it's it's easy. I've heard a lot of people say, okay, just reject everything Jewish. But you can't reject a Jewish Messiah. <laughs> well, that's the that's the error of Constantine. Let us have nothing in common mm-hmm. with the Jews. And basically, he outlawed it by imperial decree. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we, we have disconnected ourselves from the feast. We've disconnected ourselves from the Sabbath. We've disconnected ourselves... Uh, from all the instruction of God that is the very foundation of our faith. And then we wonder why we're getting all this weird fruit. We're yeah. wondering why we're getting it. And when, whenever you disconnect, Mary, from the Old Testament, and when you look at you know, basic laws or hermeneutics, um, God, when he first introduces something, okay, this, this is, uh, whether it's redemption or whatever, there's within the context of that scripture, it provides a basic definition, and it never changes from that. It it will expand as we move throughout the Word of God. Mm-hmm. But what happens is when you disconnect it from the Old Testament, or or as uh, Andy Stanley says, we were unhinged. Well, no, the, the 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 Acts chapter fifteen did not unhinge us. We were actually instructed to go to the synagogue and learn every week. Uh-huh. Uh, what it does do is it allows us to redefine everything with our own dictionary instead of that of God's. Well, and that's that's what I think mostly God was talking to me about is that you know the the evil people in this were at essentially what they did when they killed the son is they were wanting to take it for their own. Yeah. And what I think we've done is we've taken the kingdom and we've tried to make it our own not following God's pattern. Yeah, and I, I think that we uh, we're we're seeing what was originally given because Jesus actually worked off of a, a vision given by Isaiah and Isaiah five mm-hmm. is that we're producing wild grapes, yeah, and they're not cultured grapes. And one of the the interesting things when you read that in a biblical format, cultured are the ones that have been pruned, that have been disciplined according to God's word, according to God's commandments, and. You know, the, the Isaiah said, listen, what you're producing, God is coming back expecting sweet, cultured fruit. There is there is a fruit of strength that God is expecting in the body of Christ. And because we have begun building our own kingdoms, we whether we can whether we call it a denomination or or just, you know, you have these sometimes you get to some of these bishops and stuff, you can almost it's almost like a little mini empire building kind of thing. And God's not pleased with it because it's uh, it's it's not producing the fruit that we're supposed to have in the kingdom. 
Well, then we then we have a lot of the older denominations that have really wandered from the from the word of God completely. Well, they you know anytime you want to take something for yourself because we're just caretakers yeah. of whatever God builds. You know, it's a serious thing to me. I mean, you know, it's it's kind of like you know when we own property and things like that. You know, we have the ability to to say that it's ours, but we're still caretakers for God. This is His land; <laughs> everything belongs to Him, and, and it's it's a serious thing. I I think that you know I, I know that they take this climate um, thing way off the charts. You know, I think that I think they're using the they're saying that the atmosphere is heating up and all these things for for their purposes. I do think though that there's things that that are horrible, like just this trash thing where they've got the thing out in the ocean. We aren't taking care of God's land. We aren't taking care of his house. We aren't taking care of anything. And and I think that there are consequences to that, and I think that's some of what what we're seeing. I felt like when I was reading this parable, though, it was it was almost like it was a direct instruction for what God's getting ready to do with those that say they're his, but they're not. Yeah, you know, one of the things and this this has been kind of our soapbox for a while is that the church has gone into a new type of idolatry and that we we make a it, it's almost like the golden calf kind of thing because when when Aaron made the golden calf because he was pressured by the by the Hebrew people to do it they called that golden calf Yahweh we're we we are guilty of creating another Jesus mm-hmm and we make denominations around it. Uh, it we, there's a social justice Jesus. There's all these different kinds of, of Jesuses other than the biblical Jesus that we find in the Word of God that is the God of the Old Testament that came and took flesh and dwelt among us. Well, there's so many in, um, in leadership, Mike, that say that they believe in Jesus. I think even Obama, President Obama said, said that. But when everything in their life... Is contrary to what the word says. Yeah, I mean, you know, there. It's like I've said. It's a plumb line. When you cross this plumb line and you say abortion's okay, um, you cross a plumb line and say there's no, you know, no men and women. You just choose what you're going to be. Mike, they're totally leaving the truth of the word that cannot be. You can't take that and spin it around and turn it upside down. And make it say, I've, I've looked because I've, I've thought when all this was going on, I have thought, I don't want to say the wrong thing, uh, and I don't want to get on the wrong side of anything because I know that, that God is loving, and I didn't want to, you know, look at it wrong because I can miss things too. Every way you look at it, Mike, it's real clear about abortion if you look at yeah. the Word. <laughs> well, it's yeah. real clear. It takes away the sanctity of life. It, it murders it everything that the word stands on. So when you have people that are up there calling on the name of the Lord and they're, and they're pushing abortion and they're pushing all these things to, to teach little children things that they, they don't even have a concept of what they're dealing with, you know, you guide children. You guide children. And so there should, if there's a godly guidance there, then... You wouldn't have some of these problems, but our problem is the church is filled with spirits. It is, and we're guilty of, of being more like the northern tribes that created two golden calves mm-hmm. and began altering the word because they didn't want to have any. They, they, they didn't want to go back down to Jerusalem and, and be a part of those feasts, so they created their own, they, and they began creating their own laws. Guys... And then this this is this is something that God keeps on, and because I didn't really tell Mary uh, what I'm going to be speaking on down here, the Watchman is called. Mm, this know. isn't working. Well, what we're truth. doing right now, what the church as a whole is doing right now, is not working. Mm-hmm. Well, and let me let me just take an example. I heard I was listening this morning about there's, uh, I think it's in Florida. There's a bill to where they aren't going to allow you know kindergarten first grade to be taught this new gender thing that, that they're going on with. And what one of the mistakes I think that the body of Christ has made is 
Yes, God is love. Yes, Jesus is love. Greatest love that ever was when he went to the cross. But they take that and they say, so you just have to accept everything. And if you don't just accept it, then then you're not loving. And that means that if you guide a child in the wrong way and you allow spirits to stay in your family, the result is going to be devastation down the road. And God holds you accountable for that which you let take, and, take seed. And boy, do I understand this because... You know, I was in churches that were just taught when you're saved, that's it. Satan can't touch you. Um, most of the churches I was in never even dealt with generational curses, didn't even think that they were applicable. Um, I had a friend that was trying to seek deliverance and was in a church, and um, he said that there was no such thing as generational curses. If you're a Christian, Jesus took care of it. Yes, Jesus took care of it, but that doesn't mean those entangled spirits on your family lines are just automatically going to leave. No, you have you have to enforce the word, mm-hmm. and you have to you have to directly uh, address the sin that gave them a legal right to be on the family. Then you command them to go, but nobody addresses that, and so it just and it and it it makes it so out of balance because if all you say that Jesus is is love then you have to discount the Old Testament because he was there too. He's the God of the Old Testament too. And boy, when I found that out, Mike, it was, I mean, life transformational for me because I could understand it then, the the depth of his love, but the depth of his holiness. Oh, yeah. And you can't have a holy God without these commandments and the way to live that he laid it out. And it's not that he laid it out to be a bad God. He laid it out because this is how you're safe. If your free family is free of these spirits that just hover around you, and even when you get saved, you know, they hover. You're always and, looking for an entrance back in. And they'll, they'll try to attack you. They'll try to manipulate you. They'll try to do that if you don't take authority over them and make them go. And, and so now we've, we're dealing with churches full of people with spirits, mm-hmm. not the Holy Spirit. And we have churches full of people that have never been born again because they're not, they're not being preached the gospel of the kingdom. That's right. And, they're presented another Jesus. And I think it's varying degrees. Yeah. You know, like, like I think that there's some churches that, that deal with things, and then there are ch- some churches that don't deal with anything. I think that there's, you know, there's a, a pretty big split in the Catholic Church right now because I think there are some of the the leaders that are totally disagreeing with what the Pope's saying, totally disagreeing with what the administ- administration is saying, and so we're we're all being shook. Every denomination, every group of people is being shook, and we should all end up at the same kingdom place. Now, there's no telling what that's going to take to get there. But I think that that's one of the reasons we've got the conference center is there's a, there's a group of young people that God has prepared for this time. And and during this shaking, Mike, they're going to rise to the top, and they're going to say, we want truth. We're tired of lies. We're tired of deception. We just want truth. Can somebody show us truth? And they'll recognize it when they hear it. Yeah. And they're going to be a mighty generation for God. And that's part of why I don't believe that this is the end. This This isn't the war that's going to destroy us all. It's, I don't believe this is it because God's got a plan for these young people. And, you know, it's not like God to have us tuck our tails and, okay, we're defeated, we're gone, we just got to go to heaven. He wants us to be a victorious army. Whenever Jesus comes, he wants a remnant waiting there that has stood against the evil forces and said, our God's greater. That's, That's right. what he wants, and we're not in that position right now, nor is our military in a position to go to war. No, it's not. They've driven out a lot of all the conservatives. They've driven out the ones that were, that were traditionally the backbone of the military, whether it's through the, the, the uh, jab or whatever other means. Uh, I mean, there's, even before that, there were a lot of guys with, the, uh, with some of the things that they were promoting in the military. These, we had a lot of guys say, listen, I can't stomach this. This is not the Marines or the no, Army or whatever that not, I signed up for. not the ones that they, they knew. And a lot of these younger people in the military are families of military. And so they've heard the stories, you know, of, of brave men. And we've got generals in there by their own admission that are following crazy stuff. Some Following of them marks. have been. Some of them have been to the Wickham Inn <laughs> pagan celebrations. So, so our young people would be going into the military 
of a bunch of demonized people. Mm-hmm. You know, you you need some leadership if you're going into war. You need some you need some prayer, and not being going in there with a bunch of people that have doors open as wide as a as a country gate. You know, it's just it's just not. I just don't believe. I don't feel like this is going to go into a world war. And if and if it does, I'll get on here and say I missed it, guys. But I believe I believe that we need to pray that it stays regional right now, and that we get a, a handle on the food situation because right now that that food is going up. We are seeing the gas go up every day, and this is hard on families, Mike. It is very. It hard. makes it very difficult. These are the basics that you have to. You know, if TVs go up, we don't have to buy a new TV. You got to have food. You got to have gas to get to work. And so, um, a dollar sixty eight gas looks really good right now. It does, and also that's a good time to to watch the sale papers. Yeah, because when they have a sale on something, that's that's when you usually can afford to get some extra in. Um, and that's what I'd be looking for, guys. That's that's what I've done, and started looking for the the conference center. We did get to go this last week and picked out uh, the flooring. It's going to be beautiful and. Picked out the the countertops, but the one that I picked out, uh, they said that they have they don't think they can get it in time. And so they're going to pick out a similar one, but it's going to look really good, guys. And we're we're so excited about it. We're trying to be as economical as we can be, and the, and the contractor's helping us with that, you know. And um, Yeah, he's watching the bottom line as much as yeah, we are. Yeah, he is. We really appreciate it. So that's that's on schedule. Everything's going great. Um I just I just get so concerned when I when I see like I'll every once in a while I'll just try to listen to different preaching and things like that and and a lot of it's great but boy I get worried when I when I hear even even preachers that are so far off the mark I think and I'm thinking you know God's going to be dealing with them Mike there's no way that God's not going to deal with him in this shake and that's what you're getting ready to see you're going to see people that I wouldn't be surprised if they get get up and get ready to spew out a bunch of stuff that's not true and they don't make it. Yeah. I mean I I mean Ananias and Sapphira type things. I think we're gonna see it because I think it's the only we're we're to a place that there's so much of the deception and so much of the junk in the church is going to take some severe shaking. It is not you know, we've been warning now that there's a there's a divine visitation coming and that's not just um revival. When God comes down to investigate, when God comes down to see, things change radically. Mm, that's right. And we've been warning about it, you know, for for a good number of years, and I think we're literally on the precipice of this happening. And God's going to reward those that have been trying their best to be faithful to, to, to the real Jesus and, and to the Word of God. But I, I think there's going to be a lot of things judged, because when you, when you read both this parable and the parable out of Isaiah, uh, those particular vineyards, God destroys. And that, that's what Jesus w- took this from, right? Yeah. This parable here was from the passage in Isaiah. In Isaiah 12. And guys, I, I remember when, uh, and I've, I think I've shared this before, when uh, Dr. Marianne Brown called me and said, Mike, uh, with what God is showing me when he's done with it, the church will become unrecognizable to the modern church because it's going to go. It's going to be radically changed back to its biblical foundation mm-hmm. of what it's supposed to be. And guys, I'm even looking at this the way that we do a lot of things to include we basically inherit the way that we have the church from the Catholic Church, so it's the Constantine model. Mm-hmm. It really is. Uh, rather than the Jerusalem model of the way that the synagogue was set up. Mm-hmm. And uh, because of that we the men are disconnected, they're not they're not vitally a part of it and uh, and there's just so much going on that it's it's just not working. And guys, we we have got to we have got to strive to return back to publicity. We've got to strive to return back to the things as outlined in the Word of God, not the modern way of doing it, because there is there's a spiritual entropy that takes hold that we wander, that we cool down, that we that is the things that um well we can use this as analogy because with with entropy it's talking about uh, it's actually a scientific term that when you know things get hot and there's energy in space they'll they'll tend to cool down. When, when God moves, is talking about the fire of God, and in the fire of God, we're pliable. It's almost like heated metal that we will, we will, uh, we will, uh, he can change us and remold us because we remain pliable in his hands. Mm-hmm. But when what happens to steel when it cools down? It gets rigid. Mm. And I think in that cooling down process, it's the enemy taking us away, and he's remolding us into a different shape. 
That's exactly right. You know, I was thinking about that this week, too, was about, you know, years ago, uh, one of the programs that they use <coughs> is the potter's wheel. They love to take scriptures and, and twist them. And I used to hear that song. Um, as I can't remember the, the title of the, the song. The Potter's Hand. The Potter's Hand, I think that's it. And it says, take me, mold me, use me. And um, it says, I give myself to the potter's hand. Well, if, you're, if you've ever had uh, mind control programming, that's got a bad context to you because that's part of the programming, and it's, it's to make you yield to the programming, mm-hmm. to what they want you to be. And so I used to hear that song, and I would just cry like a baby when I'd hear it. And, and I'd be so sad. And it, it, it isn't a sad song because it's, taken, it's, it's talking about that with God as the potter, he gently molds you to what he's designed you to be. You know, like if you get, if you get off, like if you're going through your life and you've got far, far away from God, and then, then you repent and come back, God can remold you back to original design to where your life is good. You know, he takes out, takes out the, the things that the enemies put in. But for someone that's ever been abused, this can really uh, throw them for a loop if they, if they hear that talk about that. And so I just pray over anybody that's ever been abused in that way to where that they've been um, molded in a way that the enemy wanted. And I just ask for God's gentle hands to take that pressure off of you, yes. to release you from that, and to see him as the only one, the one true God, almighty God, the only one safe to be in a potter's hand. He would never hurt you. He would never mold you in something that is contrary to who you are. Yeah, I remember years ago I was I was preaching on that scripture, and we and I knew there there were some multiples in the audience. And what came out of my mouth? Sometimes the Holy Spirit just takes over. That pay attention to the hands. That if the hands are pierced, they paid a price to be there. They paid a price to remold you and trust no other hands but the hands of the Savior. That's exactly right. And and people have even uh, experienced that in churches. You know, there's a lot of people that that I've talked to that have been through Hebraic Roots churches, and they they say, you you can't do this, you can't do this. And it's really man's, it's taking it back to man's traditions, not what's in the Word. You know, we love the feasts, but you can get in bondage over those feasts, Mike. You know, there, there are people that live in Canada. They can't get out and build a sukkah during the Feast of Tabernacle. They'd freeze. You know, and so you have to use common sense in with this, realizing this was done in the land of Israel. Mm-hmm. And you have to put that in perspective and, and realize that the feasts are wonderful, but they're just yeah. they're simply teachings and pointing to Jesus. Oh, and and we that's had, the main thing. And we <laughs> had so many things to it. And, and, just, and even non-feast keepers, I mean, denominations have so many rules. Oh, they do. Uh, they do. There are denominations right now that, you know, if I, if I would shave and, and get rid of my beard and a whole bunch of other things, I, I, that's the only way I, I would fit in mm-hmm. because uh, that particular denomination, men doesn't have facial hair. You know, they're good Romans. They, they shave their faces. And uh, we, we, we tend to add so many things. It's like on the Sabbath. Uh, the Bible says you'll, you'll not do any servantile work, okay? But th- they go as far as, you know, kids shouldn't be playing. These shouldn't yeah. be doing that. that and uh, It's not work. It, kids, it's not kids work. Kids playing, just playing out in the yard. or. And, you know, how about after yeah. a you know, time of, of Bible study or whatever that you go out and throw a ball with the kids? I mean, mm-hmm. that's, that, that is fine because it's, it, the Sabbath is also a time of setting aside the world, uh, not only to remember God, but to bond with the family. Why? Yeah, because most right. people are so busy making a living that they don't really make the connection they need to with their kids. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. And we just and, we just we just add rule after rule after rule, and they they sound they may sound pious, but they're not biblical, and it's not the character that's lined out in the Word of God. And what it does is it causes us to make the ways of God so grievous that nobody wants to do them. Yeah, which I think true. is is the is the point of why the enemy's forcing people to do this or yeah. pushing this on people. Well, and and that's why God's way is always a balanced way. You know, he'll he'll say, "Don't look to the left or the right. We stay in the, stay in the center," and and prayerfully ask God how to honor Him on the Sabbath. Ask Him how to honor Him, um, 
with the feasts <laughs> and things like that. And and I have I haven't cared. I mean, honestly, whatever God would want me to do, that's fine with me. I don't have something that that oh, it's got to be this way or that way. And that's how I've approached it as I've went through learning about the feasts and how we do things. And uh, I've, we've had peace. I don't think we'd yeah. have peace. I, you know, there's there's been times that things were presented to us, and it was tormenting, wouldn't it? Like me and Mike might be thinking about something, and we'd wake up in the night and just a tormenting. Something was wrong, wasn't it? It and was. Then, and then we'd find out what was wrong. So we've learned to follow the peace. And, you know, that's a lot of this is, is the fruit, the fruit of, of those things. It is, and one of the things that I have found is we, it's simplicity. God can reveal majesty and simplicity. Man wants to complicate everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the greatest um, knowledge in the world comes from God, yeah. and he knows the intricacies of everything. But he, at the same time, he can make things simple for us. You know, it's like you know, not building a fire on the Sabbath. Do you know how much work in the ancient world it was to try to build mm-hmm. a fire? It would have been work, big time work. But yeah. it doesn't take work to punch a oven on. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Or, or to flip a switch. Uh, yeah. it, it takes, but yet we have, it, you know, it's like in Israel, if you went over there today and it, let's say it was the Sabbath, the, the elevators are programmed to stop on every floor because they don't want to have to push a button mm-hmm. on the Sabbath. That, that's taking things to extreme, and, and they will use the thing, you know, the, well, there's a spark that happens, and so therefore you're creating fire. Um, guys, keep it simple. Keep it simple. You, you don't do laborious work on the Sabbath. It's a, if it, as much as you can do, you do ahead uh, for the women. I mean, Mary probably talk on this more than I am, more than I can, so that you can just set it in the oven and, yeah. and, turn, on, and turn it on. It's not labor to turn it on. Dishes are done after afterward and, and different things, but you you try to just keep it simple and easy so that you yeah. can concentrate on the right things. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And sometimes you can't. Yeah. Sometimes things come up and and you can't. Sometimes Mike is traveling, and things are different. But God, God, and my ox is in a ditch. Yeah, God makes allowances for those things, and that's one of the things that that I've seen that I think is a one of the pitfalls. Um, is is we get it's like we go back into bondage, and that's not God's way. He's He's given us freedom, and and there's nothing in His Word that takes away your freedom. Mm. <laughs> it really doesn't. If once you see that God's instructions, no matter what they are, when you look at the end of it, is for your good. It's it doesn't take away your freedom. He's trying to keep us safe. He knows He knew what was going to happen. You know, in the in the Old Testament when they would do these horrible sins and have intimacy with animals and things like that. You know, there are horrid diseases that come from things like that. I mean, he's just he's just saying don't do these things. There are, there are horrible things, consequences to it. And so if we just follow what he says, but everybody just takes, I think that one of the biggest things they've done is they've taken the love of Jesus and perverted it to make it like he loves you so much that you can just go ahead and sin. Yeah. And and don't don't even dare to come against someone that's like this or you're a hater and that's not true you're just it's it's not true if if you love people and they were headed for a cliff you would want to stop them you'd want to warn them and say oh please don't don't go any further you're going to fall off a cliff and be killed you know that sometimes love is in a tougher way and what one of the things i found they take things out of out of context like when talking about how you know the, the god is absolute love is they always go back to, I think it's uh, 1 Corinthians 13, where, you know, abide these three, faith, hope, and love. That's not dealing with God at all. That's dealing to our response to God. That, that's, that's human toward God. In the, in the Word of God, yes, God is love, but the only thing that he has been revealed uh, to the ultimate is he is holy. Yeah, three holy, times. <laughs> holy, thrice. That's the ultimate, if you know anything about biblical interpretation. And... Well, and you know when you when you see the truth of His holiness, Mike. Yes, it reveals the depth of your sin, mm-hmm. and we need to see the depth of our sin. We do. It's the only way you can repent. Because when we see Him, we'll be like Him. That 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 when I start dealing with the real Jesus, I get convicted of my sin, and I begin to change. I begin to repent. What we have done is, it's uncomfortable for me to 
deal with that, so I'm going to begin molding another Jesus that will accommodate my flesh. I think that's one of the reasons. I think that's going to be very indicative of the end time false church. That's one of the reasons why the Apostle John, you know, the Revelation is not the last book written in the Bible. They're they're not actually put in order of when they were written. That it was it was like about ten years after he finished the book of Revelation that he wrote First John, and it, to me it's like the manual on how to survive what he just revealed. Uh-huh. And and this this apostle of love that that's that's his that's his nomenclature if he will in the body of Christ is John was the apostle of love okay. This apostle of love said, if you say you know him and do not keep his commandments, you're a liar and the mm-hmm. truth is not in you. I mean, he's very, very blunt because he's dealing with hard issues because when the Antichrist comes on the scene, that which people truly are in their heart, not the veneer, will completely come to the surface. Those that are really serving God, it's going to blossom and it, it, it's going to become, and they're going to become more holy. There's going to be like a line drawn yeah, in the sand. Very- Clear line. Those that were pretenders, those that have always embraced evil, that evil that evil would be magnified to the place where it's almost unbelievable. That's why the the prophet said, "Listen, there's gross darkness like never before has come on the earth, but your light has come." Yeah, and I think it's going to be even in blessings and curses. Uh, I think those that that are truly giving their heart to Jesus or are following the commandments. I think that they will continually. Um, increase they their bodies will function well i think that the sin is going to cause corruption in those that even say they're jesus but aren't i think it's going to become apparent a line between blessings and curses and that's why god's told us so much in these last couple of decades about blessings and curses about the kingdom how to walk in the kingdom how to separate your be able to live in this world but still walk in his kingdom and and just because you go to church doesn't mean you're in his kingdom. <laughs> now I remember this is back when uh, our office was in Marshfield. And uh, I was working that day, and, uh, and a Methodist minister came out of uh, Springfield. And Mary Darkness came in with him. Mm. And the only thing he had good to, to say or, or anything that would have been useful was the benefits of uh, Jerusalem artichokes. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> and in our discussion, I began to probe, you know, where, where are you with God and stuff? And he says, you know, I've gotten into this mind extension stuff and, and expanding consciousness and all this stuff. And, and I looked at him, I said, well, that's why when you walked in darkness surrounded you, because that's all the lie of the enemy. And it's the commandments of God that bring life. Mm-hmm. Uh, he didn't stay very long after that. No, but, I mean a lot you, of you people could. You don't. could. It, it was. It was almost like you could almost taste it in the air. It was that tangible yeah. that he had been so convinced. He had been so bit by the mystery religion bug that. Uh, and and what he was using is, and I, I see the New Age do this quite a bit. They will. Uh, there, there there are there are a lot of good things that we can do with with herbs with vitamins and different things uh, to help straighten out the body. Okay, and that's universal. What they do is that's their front thing, that if they get you to physically feeling better, then you then next thing you know you're wearing crystals and all this other yeah. crazy stuff, and his so his uh, hook his his uh, worm on the hook was the Jerusalem artichokes because they're so healthy for you, and then if you you bit that and begin fellowshipping mm-hmm. with him, then he started he would he would get in and start seeding. Yeah. The mystery religion. See, most people are just looking for people to come in the door and be a part of the congregation, and that's. Honestly, uh, you may not agree with me, guys, but I, that's what I'm looking for. No. I, I understand anybody in bondage, but I want to see them wanting help. I, I want to see people that are saying, listen, I've, I've got problems. I don't understand why my life's going this way. It, it, you know, I'm a Christian. It should be going different. It's going, and boy, that's, hey, I've been there, you know. But, I, but usually what you'll have come in the door is somebody that's been a Christian, they say, for many years. And if you would mention a bondage, it infuriates them. Absolutely. Because they've built everything on this so many years being a Christian. doesn't matter what spirit's working there. And they, if, you, if you confront them and say, that's not the Holy Spirit, oh, my word, they get so mad. So, see, I'm not looking for that. I don't want to deal with that. Or the, the, we've had them actually when we were pastoring is they would bring in a list of everything that we needed to change to have the privilege of having them come. 
And so, and that I'm just not interested. Yeah. I'm not interested in numbers. Period. I'm, I'm interested in God. Who do you want us to minister to? That's yeah. it. Who? Do, what do you want done? And it's not that I can't handle confrontation and things like that. I can, but if somebody is just a constant um, person that causes strife, that is a backbiter, going behind your back, trying to stir up trouble, I don't have a lot of patience for that. Well, you know that I've said for years that I would instead of having the full armies of israel that when goliath shows up they go dig a hole and hide in it i'd rather have david's band of, of mighty warriors yeah, me too any day and uh in fact and then i haven't had a chance to share with you some of the things that uh uh from our our kingdom war room yesterday uh, mike spaulding they their ministry has been through a sifting and they they've had a blessed subtraction uh in their in their congregation and I, I guess it was a, a, a good-sized group that uh, had left. And you know what happened? They were having revival. Praise God. Because the, the mud ducks were, were sent to the door. And, and sometimes that, that's, that's the only thing that you can do. Well, there's plenty of churches that welcome mud ducks. Yeah. And, and First I'm not, church of the mud ducks. I'm duck. not trying to be sarcastic or mean or anything. I'm just saying in these, in these days that we're in, you're gonna want the fighters. You're gonna want the courageous. Uh, you know, sometimes well, they let's, need. Let's let's define that. We want those that will fight with us, not against us. <laughs> well, and and you know, the body of Christ is is battered right now, and there's people in bondage and haven't even understood they're in bondage. And so, man, that come in the door. You know, we can we can give you some of the of the things that we've walked through the hard way, so you don't have to. But but there's a difference in that, a person seeking help and somebody that is just being led by the enemy and sent in to cause strife. And churches don't need that, Mike. No, they you don't. You pray for them, but you don't, you don't have to put up with it. You know, uh, Dr. John Diamond said something interesting that kind of goes along with what we're sharing today. He always talks about, he said, you know, the, you've got the wrong Jesus if you, if you just read the, the, just the Gospels because Jesus was presenting Messiah ben Joseph, okay? He said, but he said, something interesting really happens. He says, you take Malachi, and he says, you jump from Malachi to Revelation. And he said, you find out that Jesus is the same God. Mm-hmm. That, that's why I, I always share that you know, the, the book of Revelation is the fifth gospel, that you have an incomplete picture of Jesus without it. Yeah. Well, every, and, and what does our, our uh, religions do? They put Jesus hanging on the cross, and they keep him on the cross. And he looks weak and defeated. Yeah, but what we're seeing is our weakness and our defeat. Right, and that, but that's that's not how it looks. No, you have to teach the victory, and yeah. because he's coming back, and ruling and reigning, and he's yeah. a victorious king, and that's the only way that we can walk in his kingdom. That's why that's why I have trouble with some of the things that people do with the feasts. Um, it's it's like you're going back, and and doing things that Jesus took care of. And and there's teaching in it. You know, it's like when the Passover Seder, you've taught on the different elements and things like that, except for that egg that was added during Babylon. But but there's great teaching in that. But but I just don't see why everybody says it, you know, you have to do this. You have to not eat unleavened bread for seven days. Jesus, Jesus is, is the unleavened, unleavened bread. bread. And so, so there's a balance to it. Yeah, and so you do the spiritual application that they would spend more time searching their hearts for the leaven of Babylon, uh, what a difference they would come out of. Because years ago I, I read an uh, article, I wish I, could, I wish I would have saved it. Uh, it was from a website, and Ariel Berkowitz had written it. And uh, it was the sanctification cycles of the feast. Mm-hmm. That, if you, that if you apply the spiritual applications, every year you get stronger, you mm-hmm. get closer to God. Yeah, I believe it. And uh, if, we, if we lose track of that, and one of the things you and I both have found out is that every year the Holy Spirit will emphasize something different mm-hmm. and say, pay attention to this aspect of the feast yeah. this time. And, well, I, and because I'm, he's showing us something, he's sanctifying I us. I think that it's, it's not by accident that you've got all these different countries talking about Nazis, getting rid of the Nazis, because we're coming up to Purim. <laughs> and that was, you know, that's essentially that same spirit, same, yeah. get rid of God's people. And if you understand Operation Paperclip, Nazis be everywhere. <laughs> oh man! Uh, but I, I see. I think this is what's getting ready to be dealt with on a major scale. I think it's going to be revealed 
what all they've done, what the yeah. Nazis have done, where they're at, who who they are. And so so this is that time. I'm, I get excited about Purim every year because I know that God's dealing with that in his season. And so, so we're going to, I think we're going to find out who the real Nazis are. That, uh, you know, we, 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 God is revealing things all across the board. We need to pay attention. That's right. And uh, from the, the, the great reset we're seeing, we're seeing things come out of Devos. Um, guys, none of this is good. Uh, even with um, the, the, the guy that's the head of uh, the World Economic Forum, he was talking about how that they have uh, these programs, they train you know, young guys out of college. Well, the prime minister of Canada was one of them. And we see the draconian things that he's doing. And so everything uh, that uh, needs to come to light, I think, is coming to light. Now, we're, I think one of the things that we've been praying for is that the Canadians would raise up and say, this is about enough. Well, I think they're trying to. It's, yeah. they're, in, they're in a more difficult situation than we are here yet because they're trying to get us there. But, I mean, they're, they're having a rough time up there. Now, we've got the truckers that are up in D.C. right now. Um, and so we're praying. We're praying that that'll remain peaceful. That um, it's it's the peaceful protests that that will get things done. And we're praying against any attempt of the enemy to try to um, do something and blame it on them because that's what the enemy loves to do. He loves to yeah. to bring in you well, know look, someone that's that's. It's like the January sixth thing. <laughs> well, look at what you know. In, in Canada, we had truckers with bouncy houses with kids playing yeah. in them and having church services in the streets became terrorists, according to the government. According to the government. And it, it is so ridiculous that I think the world is sitting there almost laughing at Canada saying, that this is ridiculous. Well, I think I think Trudeau, uh, his family line, is has been targeted for exposure. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's what I feel like. I feel like there are angels that have been sent from heaven to identify like it's almost like they're they're getting a mark on them this this has to be dealt with this family that's family that it's just it's generations of iniquity that is full <laughs> and i think god's marking his too he's mm-hmm. marking his for promotion yep and protection he's got a plan and he's so faithful i just need to to give him thanks broadcast it out he's been so good to us yes my goodness he's been so faithful to keep us safe keep us healthy um he's just been so good to us and and the, there are benefits in walking in the kingdom and and we've we've learned it because we used to be absolutely the opposite sickest people you ever saw <laughs> no financial ruin on every turn and god has been so good and um He's very faithful. I mean, and, and his word is true. You know, used to, I didn't understand it. I, I thought, why can't anything in the word work for us? Yeah. It's because we got, I mean, I had so much junk on me from the kingdom of darkness that, you know, the blessings would have just bounced off of me. Well, you know, even our, our marriage, I always tell people back then, our marriage sucked like a Hoover vacuum cleaner. Yeah, but and, uh, thank God that we God, made it. God and, turned things around, and if, if and God is not a respecter of persons. He can turn your situation. He, well, and it was it was hard because when you anytime you've got a cult in your background, you're going to have a Jezebel spirit, and that Jezebel spirit is, um, it'll work against the man and the woman. It'll try to suppress the men, uh, make them kind of lethargic to where they don't take their headship role. Uh, and then, then the Jezebel comes in and says, now see, if he just do what he's supposed to do, then you wouldn't have to do all this stuff. That's how that's, it works. And I, I finally recognized the voice of it because I'd cast a Jezebel spirit out, but I, I had learned from it. Mm-hmm. And I'd learned how, how it, it manipulated. And I had to work to untangle my head from that. And, uh, you know, at the at the same time, then you I've heard of some groups here lately that are just saying, well, women can't say anything. Women just need to be, you know, just shut up and just let the men take over. And that's not right either. No, it's not. And they, they pull it out of first Corinthians. I mean, if you don't understand what was going on, the way that a synagogue is set up, all the men are up front. Okay. The women are up in a balcony. Now they didn't do that to be, uh, anti-feminine. The concept behind that was that the sin in the garden was credited to Adam because Adam was silent. Okay, so women were less sinful. So they were set back there so that all the men could be up front because the men needed the greatest level of instruction. And so now you have all these Gentiles coming in and you have a rabbi, whoever it is, teaching. 
And all of a sudden, Harry didn't back. Harry, what does he mean by that? So she's yelling across the church or across the synagogue. And he and basically, because he was talking in, in, the, in, the, in the same context, he said there, there were female prophets and all these things that they could function. They were doing things. It was disrupting. But he said, let your, when, when you get home, if you have a question, ask your husband because he's the one up front getting all the instruction. We take that in the 20th century and we completely read it out of context. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody, one of the one of the one of the the, pro, the the thing that takes the most work, Mary, for me, and I think this is for anybody, is to labor to understand the culture, the history, all these different things, so that when you read the words the Apostle Paul said, or Jesus said, or Isaiah said, that you're hearing it with the ears of the people that originally heard the message, right? Because they completely understood it. it it's like today. A lot of the things in, in the in the book of Revelation, we have this big question mark about, and then there's, and you look at commentate, you know, commentaries, and you have ten commentaries, you'll have at least eleven different positions on mm -hmm. it. Okay, but the early church understood every word and understood it in context, and so part of our labor is to is to is to really work on seeing that in a, in a first century context, seeing right. these things as they were originally given so that we understand the dynamic that was going on. Why did, why did the apostle Paul have to deal with women with shaved heads? Cause they were, they were coming out of the, uh, the oracles of Delphi and then, the, and then the temple that was Corinth was world famous for, mm -hmm. and they were female prostitutes. And uh, this, the signa of, of being a female prostitute was you shaved your head. Mm -hmm. And so can you imagine you have you have fresh Gentiles coming in, they're beginning to be converted to Christ, and there's a bunch of bald-headed women sitting there uh, in your congregation, and Paul is saying you need to put a veil over your head so they don't think that this is just another version of the mystery religions and you get a whole lot more for your tithe and offering. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, here. And so that way it didn't cause confusion and to, and to promote sexual promiscuity. Uh, well, and you know, when they talk about male headship, too, that doesn't mean the women can't have input. No. You know what we do? I mean, the ultimate decisions are on your shoulders. That you're the head. But, man, do we talk back and forth. And I, I'm sure not afraid to voice my opinion or disagree with you. Or We, we talk it back and forth until we can reach a point of agreement. Yeah, and I, I realize that it's easy for me to get stuck on stupid sometimes. You know, that's uh, of not seeing things clearly. Well, women, uh, women, women have intuition. More, yeah, there's, that's what I was getting ready to say. And the so, women have, have intuition more. So the men can can rely on that when they're when they're going to make decisions. And then there's a strength with men mm -hmm. that God placed there that the woman can rely on. I like you opening the door for me. I like I like that. I don't have the physical strength that men have. And uh, that's why this gets me with this transgender thing where this, this guy is a swimmer. And he's beating everybody, and he says he's a woman, but it's his shoulders and his arm length. I mean, it's it's not fair. No. And so there's all kinds of things that, that they're pushing right now that is it gets to the point it's ridiculous. And so we've got one of our prayers needs to be, God, help us to to have reason. Yeah. Help us to have wisdom, to, to be able to look at things and it and it be reasonable. Because most things today are unreasonable. And to the point that they, they reach a ridiculous level. And that's not that's never the, going to be God's way. It's, God, it's, it's God almost, is wisdom. He it, is understanding. It's almost as if the Marxists are saying, I'm just going to push this thing to see how much of, of a clown car I can make this that you're going to tolerate. Well, it, it really turns into that. And where um, it, it makes it to where I think people make fun of other people, which is never right. You know, Satan tries to push things to a point to mm -hmm. where then then you're going to be rejected because that's what he wants these kids to feel. He wants them to feel rejected and unwanted when there's when there's spirits there working. That's what makes me mad. It's not people. It's the spirits that twist and deceive because everything they're doing is to destroy. And what God wants to do is unbend, unweave, get things on a straight track where you can be blessed. Yeah, because iniquity literally means to be bent right. toward something. Right. And, and, I, and, and God's it says that if, if you're out. bent, he won't break you. Yeah, that's right. He just, he, that's that gentle potter. That's what the anointing's for. It, it, mm. it just straightens it out so gently. Yeah. You know, he's not going to break. You can trust him. He gently remolds. Yeah. 
I almost makes me want to go back and, and re-preach my, my message on the potter's field. Well, you could do that. I, I mean, a lot of people would like to hear it, I'm sure. Yeah. Guys, um, here are the Watchmans next week in Dallas. And I just have an expectation of my spirit. I think there's going to be a divine appointment mm-hmm. down there. And for all of our friends in the Dallas area, if you guys can make it, we'd love to see you there. There's uh, one of the things I found out I was excited about. I thought they were getting the smaller room like we had last time, which I think it only seat a couple hundred. And somehow or another, Mary, it worked out with a hotel. The smaller room and the bigger room were the same price. So they wow. got the one that seats 800. Oh, that's good. So guys, we, we need you there. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm just expecting that the power of God is going to fall into that that's place. That's it. That's it. We'll be praying. And, it, and I, I, I'm believing this is going to be a conference that people are going to be talking about for years. Let's well, just believe an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's what's needed. That's the answer to everything. Yes. But God won't come where he's been pushed out. No, We've got won't. to make a place where he knows, he rules, he reigns, and people are bowed their knee to him. Yeah. And if you can't come physically, there's, there's the online thing. But also, uh, if you can't come, how about praying and past fasting for this conference? Mm-hmm. That, that God would show up in a very, very powerful way. That's right. And uh, my my expectation is is just through the roof, Mary. I'm just... I just yeah, I'm going to be praying on this end. And uh, we're going to see God do great things. Well, Father, for all of us, Father, we ask that we would remain pliable in your hands. Yes. Jesus, you paid the price you did, Lord. to be the potter. You did. You paid the price. And even your betrayal by Judas purchased a potter's field yes it did father where all the broken vessels were discarded which gave you the right to gather them yes and to restore them and father we just ask for a fresh anointing on every person that we could become pliable in your hands that you could restore that you could undo the damage of the enemy and to bring us into the shape that we're supposed to be to be of Mm -hmm. service to you in your kingdom, that it would bring you glory and that would bring you honor and it would show people the riches of your grace in us. And Father, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Kerr, co founder of Hear the Watchman. And I'd like to join in with Dr. Michael Lake in inviting you to come out to Grapevine, Texas, March 17th through the 20th for our Eyes to See conference. It is the first time that we've been able to gather together again and worship and learn and just be blessed by the speakers who are are gonna be there to share with you. Those would be none other than Dr. Michael Lake, Jamie Walden, Pastor Paul Bagley, Derek Gilbert, L.A. Marzulli, Dr. Michael Lake, Dave Hodges, Thomas Dunn, Coach Dave Dobbenmeyer, Ohio Brett, John and Chelsea Jubilee, and yours truly, Mike and Jeannie Kerr. So get out and get involved. Come out and let's gather again in fellowship and pray together. There's nothing like it. Please go to www.hearthewatchmen.com and sign up today. We have discounted hotel rooms available. It's just a wonderful experience. And use the promotional code LAKE20 and save $20 off the price of your ticket to attend the conference. We'll see you all in Grapevine, Texas. Thank you so much, and God bless each and every one of you. Oh, my God.